uns hat gerade noch eine Einmeldung erreicht. Besonders interessiert uns die Quantengeometrie. Und jetzt kommt die erste Überraschung. Dass die dunkle Materie unsichtbar, aber da ist. Aber wir wissen, dass es Lücken hat. Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm a particle physicist at DESI in Hamburg. As a particle physicist, I try to understand what the smallest particles are, what our universe is made of and what holds everything together. Our universe consists of particles. Particles have different properties that we want to investigate. One of them is the mass. But what is mass? If I step onto a scale here on Earth, I can measure my weight. What the scale measures is the force with which the Earth pulls on me. This force depends on my mass, but also on the mass of the Earth. If I did this on the Moon, the number given by the scale would be smaller. The Moon has a much smaller mass than the Earth, so it pulls on me less. My weight depends on where I do the measurement, but my mass is the same everywhere. It is my property, which admittedly depends on my chocolate intake. In a sense, weighing myself on the Moon would be cheating. My mass consists of the mass of the atoms that I am made of. And the mass of the atoms consists mostly of the mass of the protons and neutrons in the atom nucleus. It is possible to divide protons and neutrons further into fundamental particles, which are particles that cannot be split further. A proton consists of three fundamental particles called quarks. Now here's the first surprise. We have a pretty good idea how heavy these quarks are. But if we add up the mass of the three quarks, we only see about 1% of the mass of the proton. The remaining 99% of the mass come from the kinematic and binding energies of the quarks. By the way, this is a good example of Einstein's E equals mc square. Mass and energy are in fact basically the same. Let's take a closer look at the quark masses. Quarks are particles that cannot be split further. Another example of such fundamental particles are electrons. Quarks and electrons have mass. Some quarks even have a very large mass. Some particles don't have any mass at all, like the photon, the light carrier, which, as the name implies, travels with the speed of light. This is something to remember. In the emptiness of the universe, massless particles move with the speed of light. What I'm very interested in as a particle physicist is, where do the fundamental particles get their mass, the 1%? And why do some particles like the photon have no mass, while other particles like some quarks have a fairly big mass? An explanation was proposed around 1960. A few theoretical physicists have suggested that the universe is permeated by an invisible field. This means the universe is not empty, but contains a field that is not quite the same, but similar to an electrical field. Some particles can interact with this field. One can imagine that these particles are stuck in some sort of syrup. They move more slowly, not with the speed of light, so they effectively gain a mass. The strength of the interaction determines the mass. Photons don't interact at all with the field, but heavy particles interact strongly with the field. The field is called Higgs field, by the way, named after one of the theoretical physicists, Peter Higgs. Now, everyone could show up and make a theory. Theories are only interesting if they can be tested with the help of predictions. A central prediction was that there are energy fluctuations in this Higgs field. If this happens, then the theory predicts the existence of a new fundamental particle, the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson itself should have a mass because it would interact similarly to other particles with the Higgs field. 
And now for the good part. Together with 6,000 collaborators from the whole world, we have found this Higgs boson in 2012. With the help of the LHC Particle Accelerator at CERN in Switzerland. I think everyone knows about this. If you find something new, you want to understand it as much as possible. This is how it is with me and the Higgs boson. However, for this, we need many Higgs bosons. We have to run the accelerator for many years, almost every day and night, in order to produce enough Higgs bosons so that we can investigate them. Furthermore, the Higgs boson is unfortunately not stable. We can produce it in our collider, but it decays before it reaches our detector into other fundamental particles. Fortunately, we can reconstruct it from the mass, direction and energy of these decay particles. By now, we have managed to measure the Higgs boson mass extremely precisely. We also investigate all other properties of the Higgs boson as precisely as possible, for example, the interaction with other fundamental particles. Because this is not the end of the story by far. There are a lot of open questions which we are currently investigating. One thing is that we substituted one question by another. Why do fundamental particles have such different masses? Became, why do some particles interact so much more strongly with the Higgs field than others? Another question is whether the simplest theory is actually the right one. Maybe the Higgs boson is not a fundamental particle at all, but is made out of other particles, like the proton is made out of quarks. Another idea is that there are multiple different types of Higgs bosons. We therefore do not only study the properties of the Higgs boson that was discovered in 2012, but we also look for other Higgs bosons. Things remain exciting and we still have a lot to do. My collaborators and I are still investigating the building blocks of our universe and we are trying to understand what holds everything together.